Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to another second channel geography video. This is episode of the series where we'll talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today, I want to talk about the insanity that is the Afghanistan nation. This is something I feel like a fair few people have known about for a while, but given that Afghanistan is in the spotlight recently, who knows why? It's probably something good, right? But Afghanistan is in the spotlight recently, and I wanted to talk about why it's just an insane concept to be a nation. Because, um, you know, even the very people of the nation, Afghans, aren't really a thing. The very borders of the nation aren't really a thing. And there's so many other weird little bits about why Afghanistan is maybe a problem uh, from time to tell that I wanted to talk about. Because as you all know, the thing that actually happened in Afghanistan um, was the government forces were fighting the Taliban. Uh, and it was kind of a, you know, a week ago, it was kind of a mixed bag. It was an even fight, roughly it looked like. The government had slightly more districts and power than the Taliban. And then over the next week, it was kind of going uh, not great, but not terribly. And then one day it's like, oh, they have like, the entire country besides the capital. And then the next day it's like, oh, they have the entire country. And so now the Taliban are in control. And a lot of people have concerns about this. And, uh, you know, some of those concerns are political or humanitarian. And, you know, people who are worried about, you know, women in Afghanistan, I, you know, the Taliban have come out and said, Afghan women to have rights that will ignore the rest of that headline and say, wow, good job, guys. The rights of women in Afghanistan will be respected and again, ignore the rest of that sentence. As you can see, things are going wonderfully in Afghanistan right now for every single person. Definitely uh, not uh, a very small percent. You know, definitely not like uh, everyone besides certain religions and everyone uh, besides Sanjay. Everything's going wonderfully in Afghanistan. But obviously you might be like, okay, sure. They're going to have some internal political issues. But all of the big concerns internationally, they at least claim to address. I mean, uh, obviously the big fear is extremists in the country. They've said Afghanistan's soil is not going to be used against anyone. There's the question that you could say, do you really want to believe them? But like, again, they're at least saying they don't want any internal or external enemies. It looks like the new leaders of Afghanistan, uh, the, the, the Taliban with their wonderful flag, um, are in tending to just run the country uh, as best as they can. And indeed, uh, they want to have, uh, they're even promising an amnesty for former members of the security forces for people who worked with foreign powers, which is a very big one. They're saying a lot of things and they're, they're doing the statesman-like thing to, uh, as if they do really want to just rule Afghanistan. So uh, they're on a, ch the Taliban is on a charm offensive is the best way we could put it right there. And so um, here's the question. Why is it that, for instance, Pakistan's uh, you know, bonds taking a hit, Uzbekistan's debt under pressure over rising concern of regional fallout. How can there be regional fallout? And so allow me to explain um, at least a little bit about Afghanistan and the weirdness that is the very existence of the country. Because obviously I could do that thing where I'm like, hey, did you know Afghanistan is the place where the British Empire couldn't take and the Russian Empire or the USSR couldn't take and now the American Empire? The three most powerful powers of the last you know, 100 years or so, all couldn't get this place. So what's the deal with why? And uh, honestly, uh, you know, there's lots of great ways to explain this. But how about I just show you a Google Maps uh, photosphere. Obviously, they don't have street view yet. Of a random place in the capital. This isn't a very useful random place in the capital. How about I show you another one of a random place somewhere just outside the capital. Okay, this is... Also not very useful. You know, <laughs> this is the great thing about unscripted videos. You might just end up zoomed in on a bridge. But so, yeah, um, let's talk about uh, Afghanistan's borders because the country itself also just kind of doesn't make sense. It's incredibly mountainous. This is the average elevation. As you can see, my point was going to be that Kabul, the big city in the middle of this, is actually just a giant mountain range. But also, um, like, can I talk about the much bigger issue is... I, I looked up this map recently because, you know, this is always a curiosity of mine is like, oh, yeah, so Afghanistan has border problems of all of its neighboring countries. One of those is because of the ethnic people group. I mean, if you look at, for instance, the ethnic peoples of Afghanistan, you can see the Pashtun take up the eastern half of the country where they coincidentally are also the western half of Pakistan. And so there's a big problem where people just go across the border and, you know, they, they see the borders as not really being their thing. But also... Okay, let's let's pray it. Google Maps will let me out of this hellish bridge now. Okay, let's 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 show you what it looks like in a much better way. I hope. Here you go. As you can see, it's mountainous. This looks nice. Should go for a hike here sometime, I reckon. Um, but uh, as you can see, um, okay, one one more try. I I swear, every every single one I looked at before this uh, went amazingly. And now it's just proved me wrong. But yeah, as you can see, it's a mountain, and this isn't like a one-off mountain. No, 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 friends. This is what Afghanistan looks like. Okay, here we go. Big city, fun fair, very nice place, and then it's surrounded on all sides by mountains. You know, 
you, you have to take my word for it on that one. But, so yeah, what, what is the deal with this? Um, also, <laughs> coming back to this map, you might notice there's an interesting thing. They're like, oh, so Afghanistan uh, is in red and Pakistan's in blue. D just to confirm, what side of the road does Afghanistan drive on? It drives on the right. What side of the road does Pakistan drive on? People here drive on the left side of the road because Pakistan is a former British colony. Though sometimes people prefer to drive on the right side of the road. You know, I mean, yeah, it's just uh, which way of the road you say right, right, which way you drive on the road is more of a suggestion in Pakistan, which is a great, great safety measure in my opinion. Uh, just let people drive on the side of the road they want to, and then see how safe they make it. Is this? Uh, there we go. Look at it. It's all mountains is my point. Afghanistan is this insane terrain that doesn't really make sense as a nation. And so um, when you combine that insane terrain with um, the aforementioned people problem, because here's an interesting thing. Afghanistan is, you know, there are no Afghan people. Afghan is how you describe someone from Afghanistan. Uh, but ignoring all the tribal issues in the orange areas where there's lots of different tribes that have very weird loyalties to each other. Uh, as you can see, there are Tajiks. Um, who, of course, have their own nation. There's Ubex, who, of course, have their own nation. And then uh, there's uh, the, <laughs> there's the Hazara and the Pashtun, which are, of course, the larger of a groups. And it's like, okay, so there's big groups, and, like, you know what? They don't really perfectly get along as a nation, but, like, what's the big problem? There are lots of other multi-ethnic nations. The big problem is when you combine that mountainous geography, uh, or even, by the way, can I just mention, the ridiculous shape of the country to begin with, like, for real, this is... This is the shape of the nation. Uh, so try, trying to enforce all of that border, including this ridiculously tiny stretch with maybe China, depending on... Uh, it, but if you, if you look at it, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you're going to begin enforcing that on paper. But then when you start thinking practice, they're like, oh, yeah. So people can just, uh, you know, like... Uh, people can just hop over the barrier, and it's been no problem for most of the history of the thing. Actually, interestingly... Because of the, uh, because it was such a big problem of uh, you might have heard like oh Pakistan uh, is kind of harboring uh, terrorists from Afghanistan or something along those lines or harboring the Taliban. In fact, wait, there's a there's a really fun line in here, right? Um, actually, wait, there's a there's a really fun line here. Uh, the leader of uh, of uh, Pakistan, um, as we can see, Imran Khan is sometimes known as Taliban Khan. You know, I I think that's fun. So as you can see, Pakistan and um, <laughs> Pakistan and Afghanistan have always have that weird connection in that way as a way to help uh, Pakistan in some mild ways and mostly a way, uh, you know, for Afghanistan to kind of uh, basically ignore this border in lots of places. It's only just become true as of the 30th of June 2021 that there is a fencing over there and its uh, movement is only possible across 16 designated crossings. But uh, again, if you look at the border, it's like, well, yeah, I mean... Yeah, but I, I feel like people might have a way past that. Also, the border crossing itself is then easy enough to get past. And my point here is Afghanistan has borders, but also kind of doesn't. It has people, the Afghan people, but it also kind of doesn't. By the way, just as a... I went down a rabbit hole here because I was curious after I heard that... Oh, so Pashtuns are the biggest group in Afghanistan, but also there are just as many Pashtuns living outside of Afghanistan. And then I had to look into the, the map of Pakistan... Eth you know, eth ethnic groups, and you can see like, oh yeah, their largest one is Punjabs, uh, roughly. They're the most uh, famous outside the country, at least. And then you look into, uh, you know, the Punjabs, and you find out that like, oh yeah, in India, uh, the Punjabs are a minority group too. And then you look into India, and you're like, oh yeah, so uh, in the in the south, one of the most common types of Indian are the Tamil Indians, which, if you look at their geographic position, it turns out, oh yeah, they're also a minority in Sri Lanka, which is just to the south. And what I'm saying here is it's minority groups straddling borders all the way down. I mean, who would draw these borders so that they'd end up this way? What a terrible... Whoever's in charge of that, I don't I don't know who it was. Definitely definitely nothing to do with any country in Europe. That's for, de Definitely nothing to do with any country over here. Wow, drew, drew those borders badly, huh? Uh, but more seriously, you see the point that the region... Uh, we have There are lots of big countries in Asia... But lots of those countries don't function in the same, you know, ethnic nation, linguistic state uh, way that it does when it's over in Europe or indeed even some, uh, you know, other countries across the world. And so it leads to some very interesting uh, things. So obviously the ethnic groups aren't there. The physical borders are mostly not there. In the southwest, it gets a little bit better, actually. It's like, ooh, you could probably enforce this border if you cared. By the way, sick. What is that? A tripoint point between Afghanistan... Pakistan and Iran, ooh, 
Look at that. Look at that tri point. Do you reckon anyone's been to the tri point? I bet you can't because that's very illegal. <laughs> oh, there is like a little border crossing center here, right? Ooh, let's see what it's rated. One star from Alarizera Javid, but it gets a five star from. You know, I, I I don't know who it gets a five star from. I'd love I'd love to pretend I can read Arabic, but it's right to left and. That's that's too much complexity for my liking. So yeah, the very very concept of Afghanistan is insane. Even even driving across the border. I mean, like, <laughs> I I can't be the only one who thinks this, right? Like, so how do they how do they manage this? They they don't have those fancy Chinese crossings where the roads go over the sides. And the answer is you just kind of drive and then you just you just switch side of the road and it's all fine. We can't we can't actually see it in practice, but there are signs saying please drive on the right side of the road. It's very fun in my opinion. And so yeah, why is why is Afghanistan's problem actually a problem for the entire region? It's because Afghanistan's got a lot of problems that are mostly just like, ah, well it's fine because we're like, we're dealing with them. But now we're not dealing with those problems. Afghanistan is dealing with Afghanistan's problems. And will they deal with them? They are making it as clear as they can, they do. However, do the Taliban care more about economics? Do they care more about international policy? Or do they care about... Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, changing a few things, you know, like, do they care about, uh, hypothetically, uh, putting Islamic values at the core of the Afghan government to maybe a degree, uh, that is harmful? You genuinely might see, uh, that they come out of it being a great, uh, great might be a strong word. They might be a valid, uh, running of the country, and it all might be fine. However, uh, when you start to look at, like, <laughs> when you start to look at, the various graphs and the various things going on here. It's like, oh yeah, so I guess, I guess all things considered, huh? Um, it's a, it's a dangerous area. Also, it's, it's a, it's a hard to enforce it. Even, even when you want to build a giant, a giant fence <laughs> between your country and another country, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky, you know? It's, it's kind of tricky to keep this group apart from this group. Have you seen how similar their flags are? These guys have a sword in it, at least. You know what, side note, can we just... Can we quickly criticize the Taliban flag? I mean, can you can you pick a new flag for your country soon? I just I just don't think this is great. I mean, would you like it if the flag of Toy Cat looked like this? It just it just wouldn't be very creative, would it? It just you know, long story short, all I'm saying with this video is uh that Afghanistan's in a really interesting situation. They have a population pyramid that looks like basically no other country, with the overwhelming majority of their people being uh youths under 18. Which means, again, look at this, by the way. If you look at just the last, um, is it really? Did, oh, that, this is the future. I was like, what the? <laughs> I didn't think they had 80 million people. Um, yeah, if you look at just the last uh, 20 years, uh, they've doubled their population, which means half of the population is under 20. And that's a very interesting place for a country to be in because that means you can rebuild the country. You can start again. Uh, you know, I, I would even wager it's possible, not likely, that the, um, you know, that the Taliban could actually get a, a viable country. They could work with whoever they want to. Probably not the, the US and Europe. They could maybe get a good deal going on with China and start actually, you know, build some links of their neighbors. They're in a very important geographic position, even though they're landlocked, even though they've got all these tribal infighting groups, maybe having a strong hand at the helm. Again, I'm not a hand I would choose to run anything if I was in charge of it, because I mean, these flags. But um, it's actually one of those things where it's like, you know what, maybe. But bond markets say, probably not. <laughs> and so yeah, that's um, that's the question for today. Uh, is I, I guess that's the that, that's the thing I wanted to show, go through today. Uh, Afghanistan is a nation without a people. It's a nation with at least questionable borders that have been under dispute basically since they were drawn. It's a nation with a government that is very unknown right now and with a people that are very 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 much um you know uh not i i you know in, in a way this is like their ideal place to be on the population graph but it's also a very resource intensive place to be on the uh, population graph so how do things go from here who knows let's find out over the next 80 years and watch in shock if it goes badly and go well we basically did that if it went well and so that's what i'm gonna do Hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, remember to subscribe to Toy... I guess the correct way... If I was actually going to do an actual Taliban flag, I'd have to go like fish and chips is the one true meal. So like, got to have a little fishy on there. Is that a fish? Okay, is this fries? This is what fries look like, I'm pretty sure. 
Um, a lot of people were down with the idea of starting a religion based on the entire idea of fish and chips. So I looked up fish and chips, and for some reason, Hereford came up, which clearly is the home of fish and chips. Would you like some dolphin fish bar? Only a 3.7 star review. You want to go to Mr. Chips, however? 4.0. If you think if you think the British are joking, you know, if, you, if you've ever been like, ah, it's not actually eaten that often, right? No, the, the reason that fish and chips are so common here, the reason there's a welcome fish bar, as well as a battalicious, is this a fish bar actually? It is. <laughs> Look how many there are in the same area. Is because it's so cheap. If I, I bet, so this is Hereford. I think that's near London, right? So it's going to be expensive. I'm wrong about where Hereford is today, I learned. But this is Hereford. So uh, bear in mind that it's not near London, so ignore my points. I bet it's going to be very, very cheap and affordable. You, you know, like you you want a, a meal for two pounds? Go to the chip shop. You'll get, you'll get some of this going on for you. Look how much chips that is. That's probably a small two, right? That, that's probably not a large. That's like a medium if they have one. And so yeah, go to Battalicious Fish and Chips in Hereford, England. This is the weirdest accidental ad I've just done. You know what? This video was sponsored by Fish and Chips. Go buy them as soon as you can. Uh, you can even go to your local Chinese. Sh this is uh, you know here's a fact you might not know. Uh, actually, let me let me in, in give you. If you go to pretty much any Chinese store in the UK, you will find somewhere on the menu. Um, just you might not find fish. I'll admit that. But you will find chips on every single... Well, you know what? You have to be wrong, don't you? Okay, let's let's find it. Is it in... English dishes. There we go. Let's zoom in. Super far. They've got... They've got lots of things of chips. But they, I, this one doesn't have fish and chips. So, prove me wrong, new chop sweet bar. See why you've got a 4.1 star review. Which is, incidentally, higher than what I give the flag of the Taliban. Um, but, yeah. Uh, we're in a very interesting situation. Every day, things go crazy. And uh, yeah, that's that's a fun thing that you can consider while I say thank you for watching. Second channel, uh, don't care, really. Goodbye.